is if you fail one section of plumbing school, you cannot proceed until that section is definitely passed. Imagine for a second that you were led into the Olympics and you didn't start training until you got to the Olympics. Imagine for a second that you're an MMA fighter and you got a big match on Saturday, September 27th and you don't start training until you get to Saturday, September 27th. You're in for a big beating. And that's the exact same way that we have to look at schooling. Five reasons plumbing apprentices fail math. Let's talk about it. Peeps, Kenny Molotov, please check out molotovplumbingacademy.com for courses that are specifically designed to help you succeed in your plumbing apprenticeship. Also join our newsletter down in the description below. That way you could find out when new content is coming out to you guys on the Plumbing Academy and also when new YouTube videos are coming your way. So I wanted to tackle this subject, five reasons why plumbing apprentices fail math because it's one of the fundamental topics in school that plumbing apprentices really struggle with and one thing you got to understand is at least how it is in Ontario is if you fail one section of plumbing school you cannot proceed until that section is definitely passed so in other words all of the sections need to be passed before you get into level two and then level three so it is a big deal you have to be good enough to pass these sections so I wanted to talk to you about how like where do people go wrong where does where does the failure take place and what things can we do to get around it? The other thing I'm gonna do at the end of this video is I'm gonna talk about two resources that I have that can help you with math. One of them is a free resource I'm currently building right now. And the second one is a paid one, but an important one nonetheless. So stick to the end to get that information. So the first reason why plumbing apprentices fail math might be a little bit obvious to you, basically is, is you have a bad foundation in math. In other words, you aren't strong in adding, in subtracting, in multiplying, in dividing, in converting from decimals to fractions, fractions to decimals, handling fractions altogether, finding percentages, these sorts of things. The foundations of these is what everything in plumbing school is built upon. So they are expecting you in plumbing school to come to class already with this built into your brain. You've already trained for it through leveled schooling, through your grade one to grade 12, that sort of thing. They expect you to have that. And if you don't have that, if you're not strong in it and they're building upon it, it is just a formula for you to struggle. And unfortunately, some people are so behind in the math fundamentals that they aren't gonna be able to catch up and get up to speed during plumbing school. And because of that, they end up failing the class. So the second reason why plumbing apprentices fail math is because they aren't able to get to the end of the tests that they're writing. Here's something you gotta keep in mind. The end of the tests usually are the word problems, which is usually broken down into a very big set of marks. So a lot of times word problems can be five marks, can be 10 marks. But the problem is kind of going back to number one, if you don't have the foundations strong, then you're gonna be working really hard to answer the fundamental questions that they give you at the beginning, which means that you spend a lot of firepower, you spend a lot of time on the test, working on the first section of the test, that you aren't able to get to the last section, which has the most marks typically. And that's kind of the crux about not having the fundamentals up to standard. It's that you aren't moving at the pace that you need to in order to get all the marks that you're supposed to get to be able to pass or even do really well on the test sort of thing. So that's why I'm kind of stressing the math fundamentals because with them, you can move at a faster pace. Now there are some people out there that think because you have the calculator, math test should be easy. That's not how this works. If you don't understand the concepts behind the math, then the calculator is a tool that's useless to you. In other words, if you don't know how to solder, what is a B tank or a C tank gonna do for you? It's just gonna sit there for you. Sure, you can maybe fire it on, but you're just gonna overheat the fitting. You have to understand what it takes to solder in order to understand how to use the B tank and C tank. You need to know what to look for. Same thing with math. You need to understand the fundamentals of what you're doing. The reason why you're dividing in this situation, the reason why you're converting in this situation to be able to do the conversion. That, that's the fundamentals as well. You gotta, you gotta keep in mind, calculator is a tool. It's only as good as your understanding. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm stressing you have to have your fundamentals in place. The third reason why plumbing apprentices fail math is because a lot of times, and, and this is the most unfortunate part about the plumbing apprentices I've spoken to, a lot of them know that they have a weakness in math, that numbers in them don't jive very well. 
but they do not work on this weakness until they get to school. And that for me is the most counterintuitive thing that you can do. Imagine for a second that you were led into the Olympics and you didn't start training until you got to the Olympics. That doesn't make any sense. The Olympics is go time. Imagine for a second that you're an MMA fighter and you got a big match on Saturday, September 27th and you don't start training until you get to Saturday, September 27th. You're in for a big beating. And that's the exact same way that we have to look at schooling. You need to go through a training camp if you got weaknesses. There's no shame in weaknesses. I got weaknesses, you got weaknesses. But if you don't do a training camp until you get to school, then you're gonna get pummeled by the questions that you're gonna be encountered by. Here's something you gotta keep in mind. School is game time. School is the fight, you understand? School is where you actually have to perform. That's why you gotta go through a training camp and that training camp means that you got to spend a certain amount of hours doing the questions that you're uncomfortable with having it explained to you until you understand it and then doing the reps of actually doing the solving the problems and if you do that before you get to school you are obviously going to have a greater opportunity at success so if you're one of these individuals that struggles with math and you know it hey listen we're, we've all been there nobody math didn't come naturally to nobody but we the people that did well did the rep. Now's the time to start working before you get to the final day, before you get to the fight, before you get to the Olympics, before you get to your leveled schooling. The fourth reason why plumbing apprentices fail math is kind of like a technique that's required when you're writing tests. Whenever you write a math test, what you have to do is verify your answers. That's one of the beautiful things about math. You can actually verify if the question is correct or if it's incorrect, and that is a method that's called working forwards and then working backwards. Remember, math is deductive reasoning. If you start with this and then you get this, your answer will be this. So you can move backwards. If your answer is this and you know this is here, you should get the first section of the question. You just got to work it backwards. By taking the time to be able to do that, you can actually verify if your answer is at least in the ballpark of correct. I say at least in the ballpark of correct because sometimes you can still get the wrong answer, even though you're verifying. But a lot of the times when you have a wrong answer and you work the answer forwards and then you work the answer backwards, you don't get the first section of the question. So you know something is up, something's wrong. Either you fumbled it on the calculator or maybe you really just didn't understand the question to begin with, which means that now you can take the time to work through the question again. That is so important when it comes to math type questions because you can actually walk out of a math test knowing which questions that you had struggled with and you can know which sections you did well in. Math is beautiful in that sense because there is one final answer at the end, an answer that you can work forwards and backwards. So that's a technique you need to implement, but in order to implement it, again, you need to have a strong enough foundation where you can get through the entire test. And once you get through the entire test, you can start verifying everything. The fifth reason why plumbing apprentices fail math is because they don't have a strong foundation in mental math. Now, I was talking about fundamentals before, and fundamentals are important. This is something I struggled with as well, actually. I'm still working on my mental math, but mental math is important because you can use your mental math to understand the ballpark of where the answer is supposed to be. So for example, if you have on the question, it's talking about $100, and you need to get 20% of $100. In your head, if you know how to get 10% right away, you know you're looking at $10 there. So you know the ballpark should be double that and you're getting to $20 sort of thing. The reason why I kind of bring up that example is because my mental math can be a way verifying my answer. It could be a way of reminding me, oh, this answer is way out of the ballpark that it's supposed to be in because just my mental math can take me a certain distance. You know what I mean? With a strong mental math, you're able to actually get to a more accurate kind of understanding of if your answer is correct, if your answer is incorrect, which is why, again, your mental math is an important tool to have in your arsenal. The same way when you're measuring pipe, you can have a ballpark of approximately where it's supposed to be, depending on the amount it showed on the tape measure, you can re-measure it again. It's the same on a test. When you look at a test and you see four plus eight in your head, you understand it's gotta be above 10, but below 16, then you know it's somewhere in between there. 
sort of thing. So mental math is something that also I feel is part of the fundamentals that you need in order to succeed in math. And that's why, again, I'm stressing the fundamentals. You need to be able to know the fundamentals to pass the math portion of plumbing school. Listen, peeps, at the end of this, I know a lot of you have a discomfort around math. And I totally hear you. Uh, when we went to plumbing school, especially in basic, a lot of us banded together to work out the questions together because each and every one of us brought a little bit of the puzzle of math that we knew and we kind of worked it so that all of us could understand it. So that is exactly what I'm having this conversation for, okay? So there, here's a couple of things that you have from my academy to you. The first thing is, is I'm working on a plumbing fundamentals course right now. It might already be done, look down in the description below, but basically I wanna give you a free course where you could sit down and relearn fractions, relearn multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, long division, that sort of thing. I want you to have something free so that you can sit down and work on the math yourself and get your fundamentals up to par. If you can get your fundamentals up to par, you are good to excel in plumbing school. Now, if you want to go the step further, I already have a plumbing math course, which is for sale, which takes you through all the math in the apprenticeship, all the way from basic to advanced, and then your CFQ all the math you're ever gonna encounter, and I go through them very slowly. It's a 10 and a half hour course. I teach it to you, then I show you multiple examples of how to do it, and then I give you work questions and worksheets. If that's something you're interested in, if you want that resource as well, go down in the description, check out the Academy. It's got content there for you so that you can excel at math. I know it's something that is an anchor to people. It pulls them down, but it doesn't have to be like that. We have things now that are available to you where you can work on it and get better and do your own training camp. You know what you're weak at and then create your own training camp and get stronger for when you go into trade school. Peeps, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification so you know exactly when we're getting videos. Smash that thumbs up, share with friends, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.